Okay, guys. Now, putting pistons in and doing this part of the job, I like to do it all at one time, meaning I don't want to put the rings on the pistons and set them down and then pick them up and put them in and set them down and do something else to set them down. I want to try and do it all at one time so I re reduce the risk of dropping it or damaging the piston. That's the most important thing. Now, a couple things to note here. When you put the piston in the bore, the part here with the chamfer on the rod, that's got to face the counterweight. So this faces the front of the engine. Okay? See there's an F on there? For the, on the piston it says F. There's also a dot. So that dot faces the front. So I'm going to start by putting my rings on. First I'm going to put on my oil wiper and wrap that around. And if you remember some of my other videos, you want to make sure that you lift up this edge. You don't want to drag it across the front. So I just lift it up just a little bit and just put it there. Now, if you're going to, you want to clock the rings, and clocking them means you want to have them in different orientation. You don't want to have all the gaps in one spot. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to turn this one-third. And I'm going to take my bottom oil rail. I'm going to put that, that opening right here. Again, I'm just going to bring that around, and I'm going to lift up over my wiper. Okay. Now there's my gap for that. I'm going to take that, I'm going to turn that one-third. I'll take the top wiper, the top oil rail, I'm sorry, put that in around, and I won't drag it on the piston, I don't want to scratch the piston, so I'll lift it up a little bit, I'll put that right in place, so now I have that right there. Now, here's the front of the piston, so, or I'm sorry, the front of the engine, and I have my, my a gap right here for my third, so I'm going to start my first ring, I'm going to take this and turn this back, just the third, and I'm going to put my second ring on, the bottom ring. And if you recall, that's the, that's the first ring. The bottom ring is the one that has the dot on it, the dot here. This dot has to face up just like this. So since I'm left-handed, I'm going to be doing it this way. I'm going to use my piston ring pliers. And you want to use pliers because you don't want to force it on there. You can crack a ring, and if you crack a ring, you have to buy a whole new set. So I'm going to put that in there. I have them in my slot. I'm going to orient that gap so that I'm going to find here's my top third. Okay, right there. There's that one. And now, since I have this gap over here, I'm going to have the other gap over here, which will line up nicely when I put this ring on the top ring. Just like that. Okay? So, now my rings are all clocked as soon as I put them on there. And I'm going to make it easy on myself. I'm going to put this right in the cylinder. I have the cylinder already prepped with some oil around the cylinder. I'll put my piston ring compressor on the piston. I've been using this one for quite some time. I think it's almost time for a new uh, ring compressor. Okay. I have a little bit of lube in there to make it easy to come out. Again, chamfer, the dot facing forward. I'll set that in the board just like that. Make sure that the uh, ring compressor is nice and flat around the block. And with one motion, I push it all in, just like that. Now, I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to immediately put that cap on, lube that bearing, and uh, tighten it to the crank. All right, now, on the bottom of the engine, got my crankshaft out of the way here, because I have my connecting rod right here, as you can see. And what you don't want to do is push this piston so far down that the connecting rod comes and hits your crankshaft because you will put a nick in there for sure. So while this, I have a ton of room in here, I can put my whole hand in there, there's a lot of room. I'm going to put my bearing in place, my lock notch is up at the top here. So I'll line up my lock notch, put my bearing in, like that, and I'm going to put some, we'll hold that there and just put a little bit of lube on, my, on the bearing. Set this up here out of the way. It doesn't fall off like last time. Put a little bit of lube on there. Just like that. And I'm going to push the piston down 
so that it lines up with my uh, pin on the crankshaft. And I'm going to do this real slow to make sure I don't nick it. Setting it very slow. Okay, there we go. It's all the way down. Okay. Now, I can take this and turn my crankshaft around. It's like that. So I can see my connecting rod. I have, oh, of course. Oh, you fasteners. Okay, I have my bearing cap. I'm going to put some lube on the bearing. There's a little bit of lube on that. And since we're using these ARP fasteners, I'm going to use the ARP, the Ultra Torque. The Ultra Torque lube goes on the, on the fasteners, on the threads. And you can put it underneath the, the head of the bolt if you like. You don't have to, but you can. And when you line this up, the lock notch is on the top. Lock notch. The lock notches match up. Put that on there. Line these up. And these are the, what is the 8740 ARP fasteners. So these go to 40 foot pounds. So I'm going to torque it right away. trying to show you the whole process here so you know how long it really takes instead of that, you know, chip foos, built the whole car in one hour kind of thing. And 40 foot pounds. Just get it nice and snug first. Get them both nice and snug. Yeah, you can hear those footsteps walking away. Okay, we're almost there. Here we go. Okay, 40 foot pounds. One. Forty foot pounds. What you don't have to do is, I've seen guys do this with a torque press. They put it on there like this, they go. That doesn't do anything. All you need is one click. When you go there and you reach one click, it's torque. You can stop. Clicking it five times, all you're doing is wearing out your torque wrench. Okay? Now, what I'll do is I'll just take the crank, and I'll just drop the wrench again, and I will rotate just to make sure this piston is not binding up. And it moves nice and smooth. No binding up whatsoever. Now, all I have to do is repeat that seven more times, and we'll be good. That makes eight. Okay, a quick check. One, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. They're all numbered. The dots are all facing forward on all of the pistons. They're all in the correct orientation. We give it a quick turnover, and it turns over nice and smooth. Nothing's binding, clicking, no noises. Now, we'll take a quick look underneath. Let me turn this over. We'll take a quick look, and I'll show you what to look for for common problems. If you do this and you have problems where it's, it's sticking or it's binding up. Okay, looking at the bottom here, as you turn it over, if you have any binding whatsoever, the first thing you're going to want to look for is to make sure you have your connecting knot rods on right. If you don't have any play in here whatsoever, you might have the rod backwards. If the rod is backwards and the chamfer is facing the other way, the rod is going to dig into the fillet on the crankshaft and it will cause these to bind up. That's the first thing you want to look for. Then, after you're done installing them, if you still have binding, Look to make sure you don't have anything that's sticking up that might be hitting the block. Sometimes if you leave a, forget to put a, 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 the bolt in all the way, it'll come up and sometimes it is, if you have a close clearance on your block, the, the nut can come up and hit the block and you're locking up. So just give it a quick look over. But this one is uh, turning over nice. 